Church Cathedral in Oxford, may I offer you a very warm welcome to our Diocesan Church at Home Eucharist. We are delighted to welcome as our preacher this morning the Reverend Dr Jenny Williams, Vicar of St Matthew's with St Luke's here in Oxford. If you wish to download the service, you can find a link to that on our web page. It's the Sunday after Ascension Day, recalling the period when the disciples were waiting for the promised coming of the Holy Spirit. Anticipation, yet uncertainty. Not an easy combination, but underwritten by their knowledge of the risen and now ascended Jesus. And it may be that your own circumstances this morning especially in this pandemic period, uh, may resonate with that anticipation yet uncertainty of the disciples. Let's join in prayer as they did, in waiting with patience and with hope for the work of God in our communities. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hallelujah. 
for those who love him. He has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore in you his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about a hundred and twenty, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number, and shared in our ministry. Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two people, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven apostles. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me. Gentle Saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end. All within me falls at your throne, your majesty, I can but bow, I lay my all before you now in royal robes I don't deserve I live to serve your majesty the nations, ransomed souls, brought this sinner near to your throne. All within me cries out in praise, your majesty, I can but bow, I lay my Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. 
I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. My name is Jenny and I'm the Vicar of St Matthew with St Luke, Oxford. It's very good to be joining you for worship this morning. As we begin to reflect on our Gospel passage, let's pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I love to knit. I find it very soothing, the repeated action, the rhythm, the beauty of what you can produce. It's supremely relaxing. But here's the thing. Knitting is all based on the idea of connection and interwovenness. This is how the garment, whatever you're making, stays together. Every stitch is connected to every other. Now our gospel today is about connectedness. It's full of words of belonging. Those whom you've given me, they were yours, everything you've given me is from you, and so on. All those words of belonging are the point. This prayer which is part of a series of prayers that John tells us Jesus prayed during the Last Supper, comes as Jesus is preparing for the end of this stage in his ministry. So he's praying to God the Father about what the disciples need to stay close to God the Father, and he's praying it in front of them so that they know what they need to stay close to God the Father. Jesus mentioned several things that have happened during his earthly ministry, that God the Father gave Jesus' followers to him, that Jesus himself proclaimed the Father to them and that he spoke the words that the Father gave him. So straight away we can see a closeness between Jesus and his Father. They act together. But not only that, they are interconnected also in the lives of the disciples, in the lives of all who follow Jesus. It's Jesus' own closeness with the Father, which means he's able to speak with authority. It's the Father's own closeness to Jesus, which means the disciples can trust Jesus, even if they haven't yet got hold of the true extent of the relationship between the Father and Jesus. And now Jesus is telling the disciples that a change is coming. Up until now, he was able to guard them and keep them close to the Father. From now on, things will have to work differently. Jesus' language in talking about protection reminds us of the way he talked about himself elsewhere in John's Gospel as the shepherd and his followers as the sheep of his flock. Psalm 95, which forms part of our liturgy as the Vanity, has exactly the same idea. But what now will keep the flock together when the shepherd isn't physically there? Well, earlier in this long speech in John's Gospel, Jesus emphasised the role of the Holy Spirit in guiding the disciples into all truth. That's in verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 13. Guiding us is the role of a shepherd, as Psalm 23 reminds us. 
Now here, he talks about the importance of being made holy in the truth, which is God's word. So, hearing the word of God with the Holy Spirit as interpreter is the first and foremost way to keep the flock safe. And folded into that is the life of prayer. But also that we are a flock, not individual sheep in its own field. A flock of sheep live their lives out together. When God's people are together in worship and in community, we're helping to keep each other close to God. And in God's flock, each sheep is precious. One thing this pandemic has brought to the forefront for us is the importance of community and connection. And it's been especially difficult for those who couldn't meet with others. And in that uncertainty, in that lack of connection, Jesus' words remind us that we are all connected, all belonging, all part of that fabric of the church. We long for the day when everyone can meet again in church. But until that day comes, we can take comfort from the words of Jesus in verse 10, that we are all his and we are all God's children and that we all form part of his glory. Church at Home has been one way to remind ourselves of this comfort and this vital truth. And we give thanks for something that's helped to keep us connected. You see, if the relationship of Jesus with the Father is all about connection and love, that's also the model he's offering us. And in that model, everyone is important. It matters that everyone is a part of us, however we achieve that in this difficult time. And it'll be good not to lose that sense of urgency about connection, not just with the church, but with our neighbours too, when things begin to open up. Well, I began by talking about knitting and the interconnectedness of the knitting. But finally, I want to say this. In knitting, if you drop a stitch, you can carry on, but there'll always be a hole which marks an absence. All the stitches make the whole a whole. W-H-O-L-E, a completeness. Church should be a place where the love of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is so deeply built into who we are that there aren't any drop stitches, that every single person knows that they're valued, that they're part of the whole, part of what holds it together. You are part of what holds the church together. I hope you have a blessed day. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, as we come before you in prayer, we hold before you the pain and suffering of the world. We ask for good and godly relationships between all people in all places. We pray for a world characterized by a commitment to truth, integrity in public life, and the pursuit of peace. We pray for a world characterized by joy in your Holy Spirit. We hold before you at this time those people and those countries ravaged, savaged by the effects of COVID, and in particular, the people of India. We pray for our own communities, giving thanks for those who serve them through acts of practical love and friendship, those who feed the hungry, befriend the isolated, include the marginalized, and speak for the oppressed. We pray for our local businesses and their recovery. We hold before you the unemployed, those who fear for their employment, and those who seek employment. We pray for our own loved ones, for the anxieties and strains of family life, and for the joys that family life brings. Bless our homes and our families. We pray for your church, that she may grow in number and in holiness, that our churches may be places where all may flourish, and none need fear, that through the ministry of your church, differences may be reconciled, friendships deepened, hurts healed, and lives affirmed. May your church be a beacon of love, holy and divine. We pray for the restoration and rebuilding of your church. Bless all who minister in and through your church. May your church be truly a royal priesthood. In a short period of silence, we bring to you, O Lord and loving God, those people and those situations which rest heavily in our own hearts. We bring all our prayers together with the prayer for the salvation of the world. Hear our prayers for the salvation of the world. Grant mercy to all souls that have turned away from you. Open their hearts and minds with your light. Gather your children from the east and the west, the north and the south. Have mercy, O God, on those who do not know you. Bring them out of darkness into your light. You are our saving God who leads us in our salvation. Protect us from evil. Bless and praise you, O Lord. Hear our prayers and answer us. You, our Saviour, are the hope of all of the ends of the earth and the distant seas. May your name be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. We put the world into your hands. Fill us with your love. Grant us peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel. Peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. is risen from the dead we are one with him again 
Receive our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Keep us in the love of Christ and bring us to the vision of his glory through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your great High Priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room, while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving Spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his commands, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and, and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, we are one, one body, because, because we all share in one way. Passover is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us so to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God's blessing on our lives, may I remind you that next week's Church at Home service at Pentecost is the final one in our series. It has been a wonderful experience since the first lockdown to connect and to celebrate and to pray together throughout the diocese and beyond. I want to thank those who contributed to this day, this morning's service, whether reading, praying, preaching, or interceding and singing. Parishes are now gradually resuming in-person worship with hundreds of live stream options available, which is a great development in itself. We would love to know your plans for future worship and we would encourage you to click the link that will appear on the screen at the end of this service to tell us your own thoughts. And for all of us and for our, our communities in which we live and work, let us now pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Your kingdom.